solving medical problems is incredibly challenging. And I think that one of the greatest challenges is that when we approach these problems, we actually attack the problem the same way every time, yet we expect different outcomes. I think that one of the ways that we can address these problems is by bringing people from multiple disciplines together to work at the interface of those disciplines, where I think the most creative ideas come from. We've been applying bioinspiration to many different projects in my laboratory. For example, we've been looking at porcupines, in particular their quills, which are quite incredible because porcupines are very slow moving creatures and yet the quills easily penetrate into tissue yet are extremely challenging to remove. The tips of these porcupine quills are coated with these microscopic barbs about the same size as a human hair. And these barbs are very special structures. The barbs, once the quills are in the tissue, can actually flare out to the sides. And as you pull the quill out of the tissue, they drag on the tissue, making it extremely difficult to remove. The porcupine quills we used for inspiration to develop next generation staples. One of the problems with staples is that the hole that's created is larger than the staple itself, so bacteria can get in. And you need to bend staples to lock them in place, creating even more tissue damage. So what we're developing now are staples where either ends are synthetic porcupine quills. And so what this allows us to do is to develop staples that easily insert into tissue with almost no tissue damage, so potentially no risk for bacterial infection. And because you don't have to bend them, they can achieve significant holding force just by the presence of those barbs. We can use much less complicated devices to place them. And also, we're in the process of developing a fully degradable system. So you won't even have to remove the staples um, over time. I've been working very closely with Dr. Bo Pomahawk, who directs the burn unit at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. And together, we've been trying to tackle a problem uh, of skin grafts. One of the challenges with skin grafts is that staples are typically placed at the periphery of the graft, and the middle part doesn't always adhere. Fluid can then accumulate, and you get what's called a seroma. So the graft is actually not touching the underlying tissue. And therefore, often the graft will not take and you have to do another painful regrafting procedure. To solve this problem, we gained inspiration from the spiny-headed worm, Pomphorhynchus labus. This is really a fascinating worm that has this needle-like structure that it inserts into the intestine of fish and then the tip part swells to lock into place. So we use this inspiration to develop a new type of adhesive tape that could address this problem for skin grafts. We created an array of microneedles whose tips swell following insertion into tissue to lock into place. So what we can do is we can, instead of placing staples around the periphery of the graft, we can take these microneedle arrays, place them through the graft into the underlying tissue, and achieve 100% intimate contact because these microneedles are pushing through the graft throughout the entire structure. Recently, I've teamed up with Tony Alaprantis, who directs the osteoarthritis clinic at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. And together, we are working to develop a technology that could be injected into a joint and deliver pain medication 
for weeks and potentially months, providing long-term relief for patients. And to address this challenge, we've developed a class of materials that we refer to as inflammation responsive materials. These are materials that you can inject into the joint and they potentially will remain stable for long periods of time. And only in the presence of inflammation will they release the steroid. Now this is important because patients who have arthritis typically have periods of remission and then they have flares. And the typical scenario in the clinic is you would inject a drug into the joint, but the problem is that it gets cleared extremely rapidly. Within weeks it's gone, or even days. And so the relief for the patient is very short-lived. And so we've developed a class of materials that we can inject into the joint, and during those periods of remission it will remain stable, and when the patient experiences a flare, it will start to release that steroid. So there's extremely long-term relief um, for the patient with minimal number of injections. There are three main goals for my laboratory. One is to train next generation of bioengineers to work at the forefront of regenerative medicine. Two, is to develop technologies that can be rapidly translated to the clinic to help suffering patients. And three is to approach medical problems from new angles to change the way that we think and that others think. I've populated my lab with people from many different disciplines, including biologists, immunologists, engineers, polymer scientists, chemists, and even clinicians. We've had a gastrointestinal surgeon in the lab, we've had a cardiac fellow in the lab, and multiple MD students. I think this is absolutely essential for maximizing our potential to solve medical problems.